It's Mono Blue Aggro deck on versus live this week. I think kind of historically about Ross Merriam, I like that both these decks are in the player's wheelhouse. Erin, for her playing a red deck, an attacking deck is very comfortable. She literally won an invitational on the back of red deck. And then for Ross Merriam, we've seen, you know, mono blue devotion back in Theros, blue moon style decks in modern, mono blue here. These tempo style decks really has been his bread and butter. Right. And, you know, in a lot of ways, he's kind of one of the original pioneers of the Is It Phoenix deck and has an open win under his belt with that back in December. So looking at some of the lists players brought this weekend, Ross's list with M20, the biggest change was the addition of four copies of Spectral Sailor. To make room for them, he moved down to two Terramanders in the list. Also, one copy of Unsummon in the main. Otherwise, the list is mostly the same until we get to the sideboard. Right, and the big thing that Spectral Sailor also enables is Lookout's Dispersal, which is just additional copies of pseudo mana leak effects. Between the Siren Storm Tamer and Spectral Sailor, there are enough pirates to actually support this card now. Right, So, and you see the split. It's two Lookout's Dispersal, three Wizard's Retorts, as opposed to the four Retorts you used to see in Mono Blue. Right, and a lot of that comes down to the fact that it's a little bit easier to turn on Dispersal with all of your one drops. On Aaron's side, we mentioned the main changes she had made to the deck. Now, Ember Holler was available, but moving... The big one is Chandra's Spitfire, being able to move to that card. It's aggressive to cut Experimental Frenzy for it, but in this matchup, having a main deck flyer is excellent. Yeah, that card is good in the blocking step and in the attacking step. Our semi-final match had two, a turn three, turn four Spitfire untapped and dealt 17 to take the game one win. <laughs> is, that, is that a lot of damage in one card, Matthias? It wasn't even difficult. It was just untap, shock you, Ember Holler, sack it at you. That's four, uh, oh, hey, seven and seven. Good grief. Do you think either of these players look happy with their opening hand? Ross never looks happy with his opening hands. Ooh. But I don't think he was. Yeah, both players really kind of... <sighs> and you can tell uh, who wants to live life on the edge and who's never happy with their opening hand. See, Aaron's ready to attack. She's into her hand. For Ross, every hand is agony, even the keeps. See, Aaron and I both play a good bit of Modern Infect and talk a lot about opening hands that we would and wouldn't keep, and Aaron has gotten me pretty on board with keeping a lot more hands than I would before. <laughs> kind of on the back of, well, this hand wins if you just draw a land, and what are the odds you have a hand that just wins on six? Something's got to go right. Why not? Why exactly. not play toward it? Exactly. And, you know, she brought the Sunday Slayer. Look at the hat. She was wearing it when she won the Invitational. It won the Pro Tour on the head of Autumn Burchett in Cleveland. It's, it's a good hat. Lot, the hat has a lot of good finishes. It's literally called the Sunday yeah. Slayer. Now it is against Mono Blue this time. A little unfamiliar. Well, I suppose in the finals of Pro Tour, it did beat Mono Blue. Its pilot was Mono Blue as well. Exactly. Beat Mono Blue in top, the eight, top beat four. And top four. four. Both. Right. Ross been here on before. six. Going to have to put one of these back. The hand is a keep. Wizards retort. On the draw against Mono Red, I think not. No, absolutely. Bottom of the deck. That's one of the cards that you already are probably going to be warding out anyway. And she will start on Gitu Lava Runner. Ross Siren Storm Tamer. We do know in this matchup they both have aggro cards, but the mono red ones tend to deal damage quicker and have more size to them. You see, that is a 1 2 and that is a 1 1. That is, that's my point. <laughs> Look, <laughs> there's more numbers on the red one. I do like, you know what? I can fit those numbers on my fingers. <laughs> Runaway Steamkin for Aaron. But see, that one's just a 1 1. Give it a second. All right. Just, just All give right. it a second. This never happens. All right, I trust you. Ross swings in for one. See Curious Obsession in his hand. Not going to commit that. Wants to represent no, I, Merfolk Trickster. Right. Ideally, you're not putting Curious Obsession on Siren Storm Tamer because you want to sacrifice it and use it as a protection spell. Right. This is again where I just like these main deck Chandra Spitfires. If that's Aaron's turn three play, she just has the board covered. Ooh. Show us the trickster. Swinging, of course, she doesn't have a red instant. 
Ross does have Merfolk Trickster. Targets Runaway Steamkin, but before the trigger resolves, Aaron will shock away the 2-2, making sure his Steamkin gets a counter. So Ross takes the three, and Spectacle Online here is light up the stage. Two more cards for Barrage. And correction there, she does not get the counter because the Runaway Steamkin has lost its text from the Correct. Trickster. Fanatical Firebrand off light up the stage. Oh, that's the same size as the Storm Tamer. It's the same mana cost. That makes oh, sense. Just... Ember Holler, the other one for Aaron. Can just shoot it down. Having this onboard removal is nice. Right, and that's the draw to a lot of the cards in Beerage's version of the deck here, is we see this Fanatical Firebrand threatening to take out the Storm Tamer, and then this Ember Hauler is threatening the next thing that Miriam puts onto the battlefield. Ross, a third island. Might just be a Tempest Gin. It will. 3-4. A reasonable blocker here, if he can hang on to it. Yeah, this is a spot where Ross is at a high enough life total to where he probably is going to feel priced in to just not blocking with the Tempest Gin for at least a turn. Right. The big thinking there being that if you block, you're going to lose your Tempest Gin to this Ember Hauler. But if he can untap, then he can try to protect it and so on. Let's see if he has a choice. Back to Erin we go. She has the Ember Hauler waiting out there. We'll start there. Steamkin up to 3-3. Three, three. Ask her hand to light up the stage. And skewer the and critics? Skewer the critics. Or is that Not experimental bad. frenzy, skewer the critics? Yeah, there might. There is one frenzy in the main. Not the card she wants in this matchup, but her board is already very strong. And here's a neat one. So if it is Frenzy Skewer, she could shoot the Firebrand upstairs, Spectacle Skewer the Critics, use Steamkin Mana, and cast Frenzy all in one turn to get it on the table. Ooh. I think that's where we're headed. Ross takes one, goes to 15. Spectacle Skewer. Yeah, Ross to 12, Here and now she go. gets the Frenzy on the board. But... We'll swing in first. Ooh, love it. This puts Ross in a spot where if he blocks, he's chump blocking with his Tempest Gen on the Runaway Steamkin, or trading yeah. Tempest Gen for Gidu Lava Runner and this Ember Hauler. And that's obviously just an incredibly unfavorable trade for him. It feels like he's trying to find that he just can't chump the Steamkin. He, this play I actually like from Ross. Because if Aaron's last card is Experimental Frenzy, she might just let the Lava Runner go. That's pretty close. But next turn, she's going to also have this four mana available and still have a full Steamkin. Sure. So more than likely, she's just going to go ahead and just yeah. get this Tempest Gen off the board while she while Miriam's tapped out. And you're right. And that is her play. So Ross down to eight from the Steamkin and left again with just Siren Storm Tamer. And the Storm Tamer's going to get curious. Up to three, three, swings in, draws two. Another Storm Tamer, and he will pass. And, you know, this is his avenue back in the game. If this is a not-so-good experimental frenzy, it, this is an avenue for, for Miriam to win. Totally agree. Aaron, she has a decision to make. If she swings the Steamkin and Ross chump blocks it, she can't remove those counters for mana because the Steamkin will have a damage on it. Right. Here, the thing that we're likely going to see is take the counters off, shock the Storm Tamer, and then cast Frenzy, and then attack. Right, and that's where we see Shock of the Storm Tamer, one counter back on, two mana floating. Check for Dive Down, not there. Here's Frenzy, second counter on to Steamkin. Ross says okay. Now Aaron is empty-handed. She checks the top card of the deck. It's a mountain. Next card down. Is it another mountain? No, it is a spell. It's an Ember Hauler. It's an Ooh. excellent spell. Steamkin up to three. Now, can she keep going? She can check the top card again. 
there is an, a, a, a sort of three mana on this Steamkin here as well. Swings in for four. Ross down to four. He has Opt and an Island in his hand. A Lightning Strike takes out that Storm Tamer. Right, as you're <gasps> about to say for lethal, and here's Ember Hauler. That does it too. Right, because it's lethal. So if Aaron sacrifices these Ember Haulers, Ross will have to use the ability on Siren right, Storm Tamer. Right, right, right. He is at four. She has presented lethal on board. And why not? Two damage upstairs. Do it again. She sees it. It's likely that she has a card she could, that she can cast on top of her library and is trying to figure out if she should just go for it. Ross, down to two. Aaron goes for lethal. Ross sacrifices the Storm Tamer. And with all those curious obsessions on it, it's a huge loss for Miriam. He's down to two. We'll cast an opt. He drew another one. So one opt to the bottom into Tempest Jin. That's not good enough. He'll opt again. Sends another one to the bottom. It's dive down. So he just says go. Lightning strike from Aaron. And that will take game one for Aaron Barich. All right. Oof. And that's pretty close to what we expected, even though Runaway, or the, excuse me, Experimental Frenzy did some work. That's, you know, mono exactly. red on the play, mono blue and a mulligan. Mm -hmm. Kind of drew the cards that Barrett wanted to see in the matchup. Ember Hauler is just a house here. Yeah, and I talked with Erin be right before this final about her matchup. She said she thought being on the play and on the deck registration sheet, game one, she's a really heavy favorite. Now, she said games two and three, she thinks she's even, maybe even slightly unfavorable. But then again, Ross has to win twice. Right. And her main concern when talking with said, why would it drop so much, was the cards Cerulean Drake. That card is just so strong. So this is two mana for a 1-1 one, one protection from what red creature with amp that also has flying, and you can sacrifice it to counter something that targets you, like we saw with that Storm Tamer last game. But there are three copies of this card in Ross's sideboard. Right. And first of all, if it holds Curious Obsessions on it, there's nothing Aaron can do about this. No cards in her deck interact. Correct. It is just, it is there. This card is a two mana, one one progenitus against Aaron's right. deck. So with Ross, upside. With upside. So Ross has three of those in the sideboard. He has another, he has three other cards that specifically list red cards on them. I mentioned them. We have a Surge Mare and we have two copies of Aether Gust. Right. And Aether Gust is something that's going to be great at hopefully putting some of Aaron's spells, even the ones that seem uncounterable, like Fry, back on top of her library, and most importantly, just off of the stack. So Roth, though, goes toward those six. Beyond that, he has some other options. He has three negates, three entrancing melodies, some essence captures. Do you like any of those against red? So the big thing to think about here is likely going to be essence capture because it can counter runaway steam can, and you could lean into entrancing melody depending on what you think Barrett's sideboard plan is going to look like. You just need ways to get these ember haulers off the battlefield, and that's a really ugly way to do it, but depending on what Miriam's plan is, that might just be the only way. Okay, so to make room for this, I want to look at Ross's list, because we're talking about a pretty big sideboard plan. Right. What are we boarding out? What is, how does, you know, what leaves the deck? So the first thing that I'm looking at are some of the clunkier counter spells. Wizard's Retort is pretty ugly. Lookout's Dispersal, also inefficient. Negate is something that Ross could end up looking to leave in because it's fine against counter spells, but for the most part, he's looking to just make more of his cards play on their own. And he's bringing in some cards like Aether Gust that are already a little bit reactive, but more versatile than these. So I would look at some cards like that and try to touch as few of the creatures as possible, but he is going to have to respect the fact that Barrich is a Goblin Chain Whirler deck. All right. Well, next week, if you want to have some Magic 2020 cards, the SEG Tour will be playing them in all formats. That's because we have a Team Constructed Open coming up in Philadelphia. SEG Philly next week. Really excited for that one. See both these teams here. Talked with Ross about it. Said the plan, as 
Same plan it always is. Get Tan and Grace a trophy. Hold on now. They're going to get him second place. That's the plan. Well, it's like Pinky in the Brain. The plan is to take over the world. What are we going to do today? <laughs> that doesn't mean that that's what, what's going to happen. <laughs> I've seen these episodes. The same thing we do every weekend, Pinky. <laughs> We're going to get Tannen second. So we mentioned how Ross's sideboard really helps him out in the matchup. Now, Aaron has some ways to fight back. So the big thing that we're going to be looking at from Aaron's sideboard is the card Fry. That's something that is going to beat cards like Spell Pierce a good chunk of the time, and it's able to take out Tempest Gen, as well as a grown Terramander, which is a fairly big game. Mm -hmm. Other than that, you could look at something like Lava Coil, because Tempest Gen is a card that's going to give Aaron a good number of fits. But really, Tybalt... Not that great here. Experimental Frenzy, not that great here. And Chandra's something you can make a reasonable argument for since it flashes back a good number of these removal spells. But you're not the best at protecting her. So you probably just want to try and stick to your game plan for the, or your primary game plan for the most part. And here we are for game two. Ross will be on the play for this one. Is that a one-lander? Might be. Has an opt in it. Which oh, I basically you about means Aaron's it's a three-lander. She lives to keep one-landers. <laughs> one land? That six, casts the, that's all six, six spells. spells. <laughs> <laughs> opt from Ross. First play here is two copies of Siren Storm Tamer. And Aaron will go to work. Shock on one of them. Shock on the other one. Yes, it is a one lander. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, all I'm saying is she has so many spells. In it her. casts all the spells. I mean, she is she has cast a spell every turn. Ross and Opt here. He, he see a curious obsession at the front of his hand. He had uh, hoped one of those creatures would survive long enough to hold it. Aaron missing again, and Ross missing as well. Now, this is just going to get fun. Tempest Gin for Ross. It looks like he doesn't have a way to protect it. And you have to imagine if Aaron kept a seven card hand here, she has a way to check this yeah. Tempest Gin. Fry or Lava Coil. Right. And he's um, trying to figure out do I just want to jam here? Because if she misses, Ross basically wins the game on the spot. But if she hits, yeah. he might lose on the spot. Right. If this is his last creature, for right. example. And you see the pound of the table there. And the <laughs> <laughs> I think both players knew what was on the line right there. And yeah, Aaron, she'll discard the Ember Hauler. And now Ross untaps with Curious Obsession and Dive Down in hand. And it's hard to see Aaron beating that. Could really just see Ross channeling his uh, inner nature boy there and just wooing from the top of his <laughs> lungs. And that's going to go to a third game. So the, the big misstep that I think Barrett made that game is she did not draw any lands. Really should have. She, instead of doing that for the third game, is really going to want to tighten up and cast more than two spells for an entire game. Well, the two spells are good. Shock's good in the matchup, and she cast two of them. That's true. Um, it does not make up for all the other spells. Oh, I see. So you see, Ross very wisely cast a third creature... Very tight play on his part. Go back to the board. So, um, switching to game three, Aaron will be back on the play. Ross, you had mentioned things like Essence Capture is good because it can counter Runaway Steamkin. Right. It's not going to be the case for this third game. Correct. This is a spot where you might actually end up seeing Ross lean back into something like Unsummon in order to try and reset Runaway Steamkin. And, you know, you're probably going to end up leaving Essence Capture in your deck anyway because tagging Goblin Chain Whirler is so good when you're on the draw. Sure. But really the big thing here is seeing Aaron likely lean into a more aggressive posture when she's not having to play catch-up the whole time. And, you know, we can make all the land drop jokes we want, but ultimately she's generally going to be the one trying to attack here. Make 
quick game there and keeping a borderline hand high risk high reward she uh, found out what the floor was in low floor low ceiling 100% she'd keep it again no regrets not even one letter no no that's just how we drew it up what if the letter was an L Look at day two, mono blue and mono red. Both with decent representation. We had of 101 players. So I guess the percents are pretty easy. We have eight on mono blue, six on mono red. Wow, the two so decks that's that about 7.8%. Yeah, just, and five we'll just say it was 100 <laughs> players. We'll just hand wave it. Wow, that is misrepresentation of the SCG tour, Matthias. We are officials. It's close. an Epsilon away. What? Simic Nexus and Simic what did you Flash. What <laughs> With 13 and 12 decks, a quarter of the field playing Breeding Pool decks, we had neither of them in the top eight. No Nexus of Fate. And none of the Flash decks. Wow. I suppose if you look at our finals, they're not particularly good against these decks. Guess what? Aaron has multiple lands. Mayday, mayday. Uh, that's not good. That's that's too many. This is four. But there's a goblin chain whirler. That's worth like eight cards on Ross's side. Ross's side. I do want to point out that Ross has entrancing melody on his side. This is a right. pretty clear indicator that Ross knows that a lot of Aaron's problematic creatures are going to be resolving, and he's going to have to find a way to turn the corner from there. See, Ross does take a mulligan. He had a one lander in a hand like that. Entrancing melody is not even a card. Ross just beat the brakes off of a one-lander. He's not going to fall for that trick. <laughs> Let me show you how a one-lander is kept. <laughs> Ross thinking that he's had to use this move a few times today. The mulligan? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he won on a mulligan to five against Keeney earlier. Some in his top eight match, actually. Mulligan won both his wins on mulligans to six. Yep. Oh, no, a pretty good top eight here for week one standard. Those of you joining us, the deck's making the top eight for the tournament. See Barrich and Miriam on mono red and mono blue. Our other decks were Esper Hero, Teamer Elementals, Boros Feather, Bant Ramp, and two copies of Orzov Vampires. Ooh, we have the four land mirror. <laughs> Ross tonight can keep his. His likely is going to turn into a three lander on the mulligan. It's likely this is going to turn into a five card opening hand on the mulligan. So unsummon Wizards Retort Spell Pierce. Yeah. That there is, is a not, lack of creature. That is not a good way at killing an opponent or staying alive on the draw. You keep this. Your opponent plays some Ember Haulers, attacks you. It's your, a rough go. If your opponent casts a Gitu Lava Runner, you have to concede the finals. He knows it. Ross puts the cards back. Smart. Big fan of that mulligan there, even though it's tempting to keep when you just have three hands, three spells. One of the things that you can kind of fall into this trap is of going, I have lands, I have spells, have and to keep enough lands to keep cast those spells. I should do it. But yeah. Ross kind of identifying that those aren't the spells that win this game. One thing I like here is that Ross, when going to five, you have to think if there's a five-card hand that can win. And especially post-board, he's got some high-impact cards. Say his five card next hand has a Cerulean Drake in it with two islands. That certainly can win on a mulligan to five. Yeah, picture this hand. Island, island, Cerulean Drake, Curious Obsession, any other card. Sure, that's great. That is that is a hand that Aaron probably cannot beat. Even something more simple like Cerulean Drake, 
Tempest Gin, and then say, well, Aaron doesn't always have a lava coil or fry, so the Tempest Gin can be a two for one, or the Wincon, anything right. like that. I do feel if he doesn't have a Drake, or at the very least a Surge Mare, this is going to be a tough mulligan. That's true, but that you know that's part of the power of one. The London Mulligan that we're using now is he gets seven looks at a good five card hand. Right. And he does have those power cards, like you mentioned in Cerulean Drake, that they might literally only be one piece of cardboard, but they're worth so much more than that. Yeah, he has three copies of a card that Aaron quite literally cannot answer. Another seven we go for Ross. And this is another Oof. one lander. It's got an opt in it. has two opts. Looks like Ross will put an opt and an entrancing melody on the bottom of the deck. See what he can do. Island, go. Is that a Cerulean Drake off the top? It is a Cerulean Drake off the top. He okay. doesn't have the land yet, though. Here is opt. That doesn't like the speed there makes me think it's not a land either. Ross draws. That's not one. And it's going to be the one lander going the other way. I've seen this move a few times. Second Ember Hauler from Barrett. Ross has another turn and cannot do it. Ross repays the favor. And with Goblin Chain Whirler joining the team for Barrett, this is going to make Ross short is work so of the finals. Far behind. Here's the second island. Okay. He's at 13. He has the Drake, but it's. It's, he's taken to so much damage, and you if, can see it on his face. Well, so Aaron has several lands, and if Aaron, if Ross draws another couple Cerulean Drakes, he has a Surge Mare in his hand. Right. It, it is He is not out of this game by any means. Aaron swings. Ross goes down to nine. She plays Runaway Steamkin. Ross needs the rest of her cards to be land. Correct. And he needs the rest of his draws to be land, but he misses there, drawing Tempest Gin. He can make more blockers, but he is still taking damage. Yeah, another Cerulean Drake. Okay. But remember, one way where Cerulean Drake is different than Siren Storm Not Tamer okay. is that it cannot counter Ember Hauler activations. Oh. So Ross goes down to six. Here's the swing. Two creatures get across, and the Ember Haulers seal the deal. Aaron Barrich is your Worcester Open champion.